Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. Under fire and somewhat alone, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo may be fighting to save his political career. And although his political future remains uncertain, his political playbook has been a familiar one. When allegations against Cuomo first surfaced last March and he was pressured by some to resign, he did what a lot of politicians do. He leaned on and actively sought out black leaders and friends to help serve as a buffer against the crisis, and in, this, in his case, the growing calls for his resignation. And recently, polling showed that he had, in effect, mostly retained support from black voters. But that was before New York Attorney General Letitia James released her bombshell report yesterday. Now, has the tide shifted? New York's highest ranking uh, House Democrat, Con Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, and Gregory Meeks, the chairman of the Queens Democratic Party, and the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, have both now called on Cuomo to resign. New York mayoral candidate Eric Adams, Carl Hestes, and the Speaker of the State uh, Assembly, and the Assemblywoman Her uh, Herman Hermeline, the chair of the Democratic Party in Brooklyn, are all calling on him to go. And here's what New York City public advocate Jamani Williams demanded today. Governor Cuomo, if you have any decency at all, any at all, any chance to provide goodness in your reputation, effing resign. And joining me now to discuss is Jamani Williams. Jamani, thank you for being here. Why do you feel so strongly that Cuomo must go? Uh, thanks so much uh, for having me. And uh, that piece, uh, they quoted, I started off saying, you can, uh, the, from what I learned, you can fool some of the people all the time, all the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. And we're finally at that point. And my frustration grows because uh, there's not much new here. Some of the uh, things that we heard were just devastating. We didn't realize uh, even how deep it went. But the structure and the report of who Cuomo is is who Cuomo has always been. Uh, and so to, the, to, for folks to kind of pretend now uh, to be in shock and awe uh, is a bit frustrating because there were a few of us who have been uh, ringing and tolling the bell for many, many years. And because people didn't act, we did not protect these women and we did not protect New Yorkers. As, as you said, you have been ringing the bell for years. But what explains the fact that so many black leaders uh, in the black community came out basically to Cuomo's defense when the allegations first were made public? I got to tell you, it's so hard to watch. Uh, the governor is a master at manipulation. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, a lot of elected officials, when they're in trouble, follow this playbook. Uh, he knows the trauma uh, that the black community has faced. Uh, when people from that community have been uh, under siege without uh, due process, and he played on that. But the fact of the matter is, he played on it because people allowed him to play on it. And yes, there is a, a message to say, we do want to have uh, due process, but that's different than what we saw. We saw people running, running, overdoing uh, the defense uh, of Andrew Cuomo, all while a black woman attorney general uh, was still in the process of doing her investigation. And the black woman uh, speaker of the Senate had already called for him to resign. So instead of backing, defending, and being on the side of those two black women, so many people chose uh, the defense of Andrew Cuomo as they have always done. And again, what we've seen in this horrific sexual harassment and this toxic culture is not new. This is how Cuomo governs, how he has always governed, uh, and it has harmed our community. Just this past year, we became the epicenter of the epicenter, in large part because of the false narrative that the governor put out of his leadership. Uh, and that happens because there's an infrastructure there. And that infrastructure is built on people who should be showing courage to protect people mm -hmm. who don't have the same privileges they do as leaders. But that didn't right. happen. And so now we're here. So do you believe that that, that, that kind of institutional uh, cultural trauma that black people have around being accused when they're not 
you know, they're not guilty of something. In addition to uh, black leaders coming to uh, aid accounts for, you know, the polling numbers that show that Cuomo was actually holding on to black support. Um, that's both of those things are absolutely true. Uh, but what should have happened are that leaders who know better, who know who he is, who knows the culture of how he operates, should not have allowed that trauma uh, to be misused in the way that it was, because that trauma is real. It's very real, we understand it. And so when black folks uh, hear these stories, it triggers that trauma. Uh, and they have, we have, we are a very loyal folk <laughs> at times. And so they remember his dad, they remember some things good that he may have done on top of uh, looking like uh, he may be in a situation that someone they know of themselves have been in. And instead of leaders uh, pushing back on that, they fed into it. Uh, because this culture that we have, uh, unfortunately, allows a bully like Cuomo uh, to be a bully because uh, people are generally and sadly oftentimes concerned about careers, concerned about political moves more than they are concerned about the people they represent. Uh, I can't say, you know, with specifics who uh, this person, that person, but in general, that's too often what we see. And I think we did see that this time. My hope, the lesson here is uh, that the infrastructure that allowed a Cuomo to exist since 2011, that we learn a lesson here that it shouldn't be these 11 women who show courage. Uh, it should be the people who actually have much more protections than those 11 women. And thank God for the attorney general who put a process in place to allow their voices to be heard when many people not only tried to silence them, but tried to shame and embarrass them. And again, I just have to keep pointing this out. Uh, this governor, I don't believe was fit for a very long time uh, for the way he has governed the decisions that he's made. I remind folks that this is just one report. We're still waiting on a report. Uh, some of the viewers may know the uh, controversy around uh, the uh, Mario Cuomo Bridge. Uh, there's still some controversies mm -hmm. over how he dealt with the nursing homes. The federal, uh, mm -hmm. federal government finished, the state isn't. Uh, there's still some uh, reports due on how he misused his employees to write a book about leadership while people were dying because of decisions he made. So we're only at part one, the first chapter of this book. Uh, and, you know, so, he's... Sorry, go ahead. So, so do you think that we get to another chapter? Do you think that he holds on, he doesn't resign? And if he doesn't, do you think that the, the state legislature is prepared and willing to impeach him? We have gotten to the point where it's just so undeniable uh, that I believe, yes. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I think there was a time where um, this wasn't as moving, this was not moving as expeditiously as it should have. Uh, but I believe that time has passed. And I think folks will move uh, uh, to force him out if he doesn't have the decency or even the respect of New Yorkers to just stop doing this to us uh, and to resign. Uh, but, you know, those chapters, I hope, are written because it is a part of the legacy of who Andrew Cuomo is. And I, I want people to understand the bad decisions that he made, even as he tried to portray a certain leadership that really harmed uh, the people who needed his help the most in New York State. And that has been happening for quite some time. And there were people who enabled uh, and defended and allowed that to happen for as long as it did. People have talked about, before this crisis, uh, Cuomo as a potential presidential nominee. What do you think now, after all of this has been made public, and as you say, other th other reports are still coming, what becomes of Andrew Cuomo? I, I think his political career uh, is probably finished at this moment in time. Uh, I think there was a lot of promise there. Uh, we've seen this time and time again. Uh, people come in with promise and saying they're going to do a whole bunch of things and, and don't do it. And I said, you know, during the height of uh, the protests last year and the height of the pandemic of COVID, uh, as we saw gun violence beginning to rise, that at that moment in time in New York City, we had the wrong mayor, the wrong governor, and the wrong president. Uh, and that was true then. And I, I you know, I, I stand by what I said. And this governor in particular, had we had another one, uh, we may not have been the epicenter. We may not have, may not have taken the hits 
uh, that we took. And I think history is going to record that. And I think folks in the moment uh, needed a voice uh, that they can follow in absence of the voice uh, from the federal government. But it's, it, it was really hard to watch people uh, praise him when I and others knew who he was and knew how dangerous he was. Jamani Williams, thank you so much for your time this evening, sir. I really appreciate it.